Hi, my name is Lori Peek and I'm FIRST. I'm an Associate Professor of Sociology and the Co-Director of the Center for Disaster and Risk Analysis here at Colorado State University and I am also a first generation college graduate. And I am so happy to have the opportunity to share just a little bit of my story with you today. I grew up in Kansas in a tiny town of about 500 people and I was raised on a farm and I have three brothers and we actually all went to college and we all went to the same college together and we went there because my mom and dad are super super hard workers and they believe so much in the power of an education and they never tried to force us to do anything, but they always encouraged us to follow our dreams and to follow our passions. And when I was in junior high, my mom ended up getting a job at this university in Kansas called Ottawa University. And the job didn't pay a lot, but as part of the job, she received free tuition remission for any of her children. And so my brothers and I, we all ended up getting to go to this university as a result of my mom attaining a job there. We went through college and I was a sociology major and I loved my professors and I loved my classes and then I got close to graduating and I didn't know what I was going to do next and my advisor said, have you ever thought about going to graduate school? And I said, no, I'd never thought about that. But it lit a spark inside of me and I ended up moving from Kansas out to Colorado and I did a master's at Colorado State University and then I did my doctorate in sociology at the University of Colorado at Boulder and then I was lucky enough to be hired here at CSU and now I am one of the team of first generation faculty members here at the university and I just want to say to you that I have first generation students in my classes every semester and I see the struggles and the challenges that they go through and I know how hard it can be when you're the one who's blazing the path in your family and the first one to go to college and you don't always have the same tools and resources. But I often see that my first generation students, they, ha they bring a particular skill set and they often bring a drive and a desire to complete their education that I so respect. And so I know it can be difficult, but at this university there is such a great community of wonderful people to support first generation students. There are faculty here and staff members who care so much about this. And so one piece of advice I have is reach out if you're ever struggling, reach out and, and find someone because there is always someone here who's going to lend a helping hand or have a resource available to assist. And I also would say, go to class, meet your professors, make good friends, have a great time, but don't forget you're also here to learn and to study and to experience the world in many different ways. And so just to close, I just want to say how much I love being here at Colorado State, how fortunate I feel to be here. And Every day of my life, I wake up and I can't believe I get paid to do this job because I love it so much and it's all because I was able to go to school and to complete my education and it's opened up every door in my life and I am so thankful for it and I wish you all the best as you move forward with your education. Well, good evening. Good evening. Ajay, good evening. Good to see you. I'm Mike Martin, and I'm proud to be the chancellor of the CSU system and to welcome you tonight. This is a, for those of us who uh, devote our lives and our careers to higher education, this is one of the wonderful celebrations we all get to take part in, and I want you to know how pleased I am to be here. Uh, congratulations to all of you first generation award winners. It's a special accomplishment and you should get, take great pride. And those of you who have family here, congratulations to you for being part of a network that is changing people's lives and they will change lives in turn. So thank you and congratulations. I want to note that I'm half like you and here's why. I too am a first generation graduate. Uh, there were Four, in my children, four family of my children, I was the oldest and the only one to graduate from college. And I've pointed out to my cousins 
There were 28 cousins. Three started before me, but I beat them all to graduation, and I remind them of that all the time. Where I'm not like you is I wasn't a good enough student to win an award. So I'm half, I'm a, I'm a first generation, but not a first generation award winner, but I'm awfully proud to be with the award winners and the first generation students. I want to just second what was on the, uh, on the video. First of all, you should take great pride in what you've accomplished, but more importantly, take great pride in what you will accomplish. This is a springboard to something bigger in your life. And uh, you've taken advantage of the opportunity to make the single greatest investment you can ever make. And that's in your own capability and your own intellect. So don't underestimate the value of that, uh, that investment. And certainly you've chosen a great place to make that investment. This is a first-rate university, a land-grant university, a research university, and a university that cares about you. And then secondly, and the professor on the video said, if you need help, reach out. Well, here's the other thing I urge you to do. Reach out and help others. You are now going through an experience that others will follow you through. And wherever possible, share your experiences and share your confidence and share your support with those who will come behind you. Not all students, but for most certainly first generation students. Because all of us who have had that experience know it's a little daunting at the outset, but it's incredibly rewarding at the end. So again, welcome, uh, have a great evening, and congratulations for being at least one step ahead of me, despite the fact that I'm awfully proud to be part of this crew. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Martin. We appreciate your sharing the evening with us and also your inspirational words. The video that we watched uh, was of Dr. Lori Peake. She's an associate professor in the Department of Sociology, and she's also the co-director of the Center for Disaster and Risk Analysis. The video is part of the I'm First project, which is an ongoing collaboration that's a national program. So if any of our first generation community members, including staff, faculty, or students, are interested in posting a video, please let us know, because we'd like to help you with that. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to everyone. My name is Connie Jaime Lujan, and as one of the first class, well, excuse me, as a member of the first class to receive the First Generation Award 30 years ago, it is my honor and pleasure to spend this evening celebrating 30 years of first generation student success here at CSU. Dr. Paul Thayer, Jean Patron, and Paul Salas were our CSU pioneers who created and implemented the First Generation Award 30 years ago. Here's a fun fact. Dr. Thayer, Rose Creston, who is an, uh, is an original First Generation Award committee member, and I have had the opportunity to watch all First Generation Award recipients and award events evolve over the last 30 years. What a pleasure it has been. Barb asked me if I remember what the theme was from 30 years ago, and I, I smiled and fondly remembered that we were just gathered together, Barb, getting to know each other, having cheese and crackers, so it wasn't this fancy. So great memory, and it's fun to see how far we've come since then. We have had many wonderful students in our First Generation Award community. Sadly, there is one who would have been here tonight as a graduating senior who died unexpectedly last June. Michael Hobble left this world too soon, but not without making an impact. In Michael's honor, a scholarship has been created in the College of Engineering, and both, of, both his holiday light display and the robot project that he's worked on are being kept going by his friends. We are honored that Michael's parents, Bob and Karen Hobble, have joined us in his honor tonight. Michael, I'm sorry, Bob and Karen Artur right here. If everyone would please join me in a moment of silence in Michael's honor. Thank you. We honor Michael's memory tonight, and we celebrate the accomplishments so much in, 
I'm sorry, we honor Michael's memory and celebrate that he accomplished so much in his short lifetime. And we are also here to celebrate all of our CSU First Generation Award Village. So students, you are why we gather tonight. You are the reason myself and others who work on this campus do what we do. So at this time, we would like all of our First Generation Award students to please stand if you're able so that we can celebrate you. So all recipients, please stand. Thank you. Would all First Generation Award students completing their degrees this May, August, or December please stand or wave so that we can congratulate you. So anybody graduating? May, December, August. <laughs> nice work. Thank you. Please be seated. Joining us tonight are members of your extended first generation community. As I announced your group, please stand if you are able or raise your hand so that students can recognize you. Please hold all applause until all have been announced. We have already met Chancellor Martin. The next important group is President Tony Frank and members of his cabinet. A few up front, waving, great. Next, our wonderful First Generation Award Committee. They are listed on your program on the bottom. It's a large committee, so if you're able to stand, that would be great. Within our First Generation Award Committee, it includes our Associate Vice President for Student Success, Dr. Paul Thayer, a founding father of the First Generation Award Committee. Paul's to our left here, or sorry, your right, my left. And Ms. Rose Creston, also a longtime member of the First Generation Award Committee. Rose is right next to President Frank. She's waving. She's waving. Okay. Next, we'd like to recognize our representatives from Student Financial Services. There are partners who manage the First Generation Award and other funds that you students depend on to obtain your degrees. So individuals from Student Financial Services, if you would please stand. We've got Sylvia, Tom, and Heidi with us this evening, thanks. What about our friends from the Office of Admissions who helped each of our students select CSU? No one from admissions this evening? All right, our next big group of supporters. Any families and significant members of our first generation student circle of support, please stand if you're able. This includes partners, parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, daughters, sons, in-laws, friends, almost all of you, please stand if you're able. Next, what about faculty and staff who are themselves first-generation college graduates and allies? All right, students. Now, all other allies who support our university's commitment to our first-generation students. So if you didn't stand already, it's your time to stretch. It's going to be a long one. <laughs> Great. All right, some of our last group are extra special to us as we have alumni from the first 30 years of the First Generation Award Program who now serve as members of our CSU community. There are individuals who have benefited from the program just like myself because of the foresight of the campus committee and also the state board who created this program in 1984. So with the graduates of our First Generation Award Program who, have, who are here tonight, Please stand so that students can know who to seek out around campus. So students, award recipients, these are the individuals that you want to grab. So we've got Asuka and Heidi. Looks like Jessica back there. Michelle? Great. All right. So yeah, a little shy. What a great way to kick off celebrating the first 30 years of the program and the many students, including our First Generation Award students here tonight, who have benefited from the impact of this program. Soon, we will recognize our four Jackson Distinguished First Generation Scholars. Before we meet those four special ambassadors of the First Generation Award program, we're pleased to hear remarks from President Frank, who has joined us tonight, even though he has such a hectic schedule. Dr. Tony, 
Dr. Tony Frank is our 14th president and one of the strongest allies of the First Generation Award program has ever had. He's the son of a teacher, and he appreciates the investment that CSU has made for the last three decades of guiding talented first-generation educational pioneers through their undergraduate journey. We are grateful for his continued support. Please help me in welcome Dr. Tony Frank. A little nervous, actually, because everyone keeps telling me that I'm only here for a little while. Um, <laughs> and it makes me think that either that has a more philosophical meaning or that perhaps I'm missing another event that I <laughs> should be at. Um, the history of the, the first generation scholars, it's, it's interesting to hear um, the comments. And going back, I can, I can think back through about 15 or 16 years of, of coming to this event, so perhaps just a little more than half of it. And it is amazing to think how this event has changed. Um, when we first moved into the main ballroom at the Lorry Student Center, that was a, a, a big step forward. And now to see uh, the numbers of tables and the, the numbers of people here, the representation from the deans and the cabinet, and Chancellor Martin, for you to be here, this is, uh, uh, and all the, the families, uh, it's just wonderful to see you all here. 30 years is a long time, I was thinking, as you were all talking about that. 30 years ago, I think, um, the Chancellor and I have been friends for a long time. I think Mike had, had already finished his welding degree by then um, and was a faculty member at Oregon State, right, where, where he and I would cross paths a few years later. I was, this time 30 years ago, I was just getting ready to graduate from vet school. I had uh, bought my first vet box for the back of my truck, and I was incredibly excited about getting on with my career and not having to uh, wear a tie anymore. Um, <laughs> so to the first generation scholars, I would tell you, and I think Mike would say the same thing, um, the path in front of you may not always take you exactly where you think it will be, but your education has prepared you well for all the, all the twists and turns that are along that path. The main thing that we're here for this evening is to pay tribute to all of our uh, first generation scholar recipients. And it's important to point out that what you receive uh, is not a gift. What you receive is a recognition, uh, a recognition earned for work that you have done. This university, uh, as Chancellor Martin mentioned, is a land grant university, and tomorrow, in fact, uh, we will celebrate Founders Day, the birth of Colorado State University. If you think back a bit to that time, virtually everyone who was starting to go to college when land-grant universities were formed, signed into, into law by President Abraham Lincoln, virtually everyone was a first-generation student. Now, over that intervening 150 years, our society has had many changes, and we've made a lot of progress around educational access. But still, there are so many people, yourselves included, with so much talent and so much motivation, and we need to continue to strive to provide the opportunities for you all to take advantage of that. I want you to think for just a moment about the concept of a door, because you all, especially our graduating seniors, are rapidly approaching a doorway. And when you step through that doorway, you will have available to you opportunities that members of your family who have come before you did not have. You'll have choices, the chance to do things with your lives. And I want you to think about a couple of things with that doorway. First, I want you to think about the tremendous resources of the people in this room, people who have acted as your mentors, as your support staff, people who have loved you unconditionally throughout the ups and downs that life has thrown your way. Don't hesitate to ask them for help as you make your choices in walking through that doorway of picking the opportunities that you choose to take advantage of. And secondly, as you walk through that doorway, pause to hold it open for the people behind you. The people who came before you have helped to set the stage with the growth of this program. In many ways, you're the beneficiary of that. 
And in very many ways, you now have that responsibility. We have that expectation of you that with your success, as proud as we are of you and as much as we're here to celebrate your success, we're also here to tell you that we have expectations. And those expectations are that you will help hold that door open. You'll act as a mentor. You'll support other people. You'll do many things, but probably the most important among them you've already accomplished. You have changed in important ways by being a pioneer, by being an explorer, by being the first in your family to do these things. You've changed the course of the generations of your family who will follow you. That's an incredibly powerful accomplishment, and it is my hope that you are as proud of accomplishing that as we are of all of you. So to all of you for being here this evening again, thank you very much, and to our scholars, congratulations. Tony, thank you so much for your encouraging words and your continued support. We sure appreciate it. We have a tradition at our First Generation Award program of connecting the dots, as Barb would say. On your table, you will find a network sheet that helps us know who you chatted with tonight and to help us make you make, help you make those connections in the days and the weeks and years to come. So if you haven't already figured out that we want you to fill out that sheet, please do so now to start passing it around, and we'll gather them at the end of the program. That way, if you want to know who you chatted with tonight, we'll definitely be able to let you know. Thanks. Some of you already know the story of William Sharpless Jackson, Jr., a Denver ally who made a generous gift to CSU that provides scholarship support on behalf of our first-generation educational pioneers. Unfortunately, Bill's health prevents him from being here this evening, but we always include and honor him during our program as a friend and supporter. And for those of you attending this reunion for the first time, let me explain how our Jackson Distinguished First Generation Scholars are selected. First Generation Award Scholars who are a junior or a senior and have earned a minimum of a 3.0 grade point average are considered for the prestigious honor of becoming a Jackson Scholar. A committee reviews the essays of the eligible pool, looking for evidence of outstanding leadership, involvement in the promotion of a positive climate for diversity on campus, and for whom the award has made a significant impact. I will read a short summary about each of this year's Jackson Distinguished Scholars as they join me on the stage to be congratulated by Dr. Paul Thayer. You're in for a treat. These are some pretty amazing individuals. And those of you that are new to CSU, I hope that one day you aspire to be up here with these individuals. Thank you, Paul. We will start with Junia Jimma. <laughs> Junia was born in Ethiopia and upon arriving in Denver at the age of 14, she promptly enrolled at Denver South High School. Through the nonprofit Minds Matter Denver, she connected with professionals whose goals were to increase academic performance, improve leadership skills, and obtain college financial aid and scholarships for eligible students so that they could attend a four-year university. In addition to the academic talent-related support, she gained lifetime friends in the program. In fact, one is with us this evening. A trio participant when in high school, as well as here at CSU in the Academic Advancement Center, she continues to recognize and embrace learning opportunities presented to her. She currently serves as an AAC navigator, which is a guide to other first-gen students. Dunya is a member of AFA Kappa Psi, the Coeducational Business Fraternity, and has participated in the College of Business Mentoring Program, the Albert C. Yates Leadership Development Institute, the Leading, Empowering, Advancing, Determined, or LEAD Conference, the Dream Project, and as an alumna of the learning community, she pays it forward by being a Global Village Learning Community Peer Mentor. As a graduate of the Denver Public Schools, she received a Denver Scholarship Award. She also received a Sachs Foundation Award created by Henry Sachs, a Jewish man who developed a close relationship with African-American individuals and who created the scholarship to act upon the discrimination both groups faced. 
Dunya is a junior working on a business administration degree with a concentration in accounting. She is also seeking a minor in interdisciplinary, um, international development, interdisciplinary studies. She has completed internships through the Inroads program and plans to participate in the Semester at Sea program this fall. Dunya will graduate in May of 2016. Congratulations, Dunya. Grace Pamilio. Grace Pamilio, a graduate of Pueblo West High School, is a member of our University Honors Program and will graduate in this May in music education. She will also complete requirements for kindergarten through 12th grade or K-12 teacher licensure. Grace is currently teaching at Preston Middle School and she will teach at McGraw Elementary the second half of this semester. She completed practicums at Laurel Elementary and at Fort Collins High School. She has also worked with the CSU Concert Choir. Outside of her own role as a student, she is a private vocal instructor for the Loveland Academy of Music. To complement her formal training, she has attended several Colorado Music Educators Association, or CMEA, conferences, as well as other conferences that will help her enrich her teaching style. Following graduation, she will pursue certification in the Kodai method of music education. She is very proud of a college choir tour that allowed her to return to Pueblo to perform at local high schools where she hoped to encourage local youth to pursue education which she knows transforms lives. While in high school, Grace participated in the annual joint food drive that many Pueblo area students know and love, the Tony and Louie Cupboard Project, named for two beloved Pueblo community members. Feeling blessed to have received support and guidance from adults in her life, Grace participated in the Partnership Mentoring Youth Program to reach out and support another young person. A core value of hers is to make a difference in the lives of others because she knows that each person matters. Congratulations, Grace. <laughs> Lilani Ramos. Community and having a circle of people who guide her have always been a part of Lilani's life. She grew up in Denver in a loving family who watched over her. She found the same care in her elementary, middle, and high school, and credits the staff at Kennedy High for creating an inclusive environment where students of all backgrounds felt welcomed and valued. She strives to integrate, integrate that sense of inclusiveness in her own classroom as a student teacher at Tozer Primary School in Windsor, Colorado. She previously completed practicums at Shepherdson and O'Day Elementary Schools and with the Head Start English Language Learner Children at Irish Elementary. Lilani has also volunteered at Dunn Elementary, all in Fort Collins. While still in high school, Lilani participated in the Women's Foundation of Colorado's Girls Grant Making Group, which helped award funding to nonprofit organizations that worked to prevent girls from dropping out of school. She learned early the impact that education has on each student, a cornerstone of our own First Generation Award program. As a graduate of Kennedy, a Denver public school, Lilani received a Denver Scholarship Foundation Award and also successfully competed and received a Reicher Family Foundation Scholarship. She is active in Pi Lambda Chi Latina Sorority Incorporated and up until this semester, she served on the reception team for the Center for Advising for Student Achievement, or CASA. She will graduate in May with a degree in Human Development and Family Studies, and will also complete the concentration in Early Childhood Education, which will allow her to pursue a teacher licensure. She looks forward to being a first grade teacher this fall. Congratulations, Alani. Jonathan Slavens. Despite growing up in northern Colorado, John could not have imagined himself as a CSU student at the age of 35. He graduated from Berthet High, and like most of his friends, he had already been working part-time as a local plumbing and excavating company. Unfortunately, just prior to graduating, he was injured and was therefore unable to enter the Navy to pursue the nuclear engineering career he had planned. With no other resources to pay for college, he went to work full-time in the plumbing industry in various capacities and earned 
a Colorado master plumbing license at the young age of 24. His life and work experience provide him with skills that he uses in the classroom and related work every day. John is a member of Pi Tau Sigma, a mechanical engineering honor society whose membership consists of students in the upper 25 to 35 percent of their class. He works part-time with Dr. Thomas Bradley on a Department of Energy funded grant at the CSU Industrial Assessment Center providing on-site energy assessments for, for participating manufacturing businesses. The experience includes working as a team to pull and analyze the data and to generate a report for the business. As you will hear in his remarks, John is committed to providing a stable and happy life for his family. John, his wife Shay, and son Cameron have engineered a plan that includes John, John's commute to campus after he and Cam make the daily trip from their home in Greeley to Monroe Elementary in Loveland because it's a better school for Cam. And Cam, we hope you become a future Ram one day. Wouldn't that be perfect? John is seeking internships and will graduate in 2016. Congratulations, John. Would other, the other Jackson Scholars please return to the stage for a photo opportunity? Families, now's a great time to pull out your cameras if you'd like. It seems so strange standing on this side of the podium after I spent the last three years in the audience. I remember attending this event as a freshman for the first time and leaving feeling so inspired, connected, and grateful to be a part of this community. This year is even more special because 30 years ago, people on this campus cared enough to create this program. We are so lucky to attend a university that is dedicated to supporting unique programs like ours. I sometimes forget that there are many people who are interested in my story and who might benefit from hearing it. Like each of you in this room, my journey to this point has not been an easy one. I lost my mother to breast cancer when I was two years old. And I still cannot decide which is more difficult, losing a parent or a loved one after many years of getting to know and love them or having to walk through life never knowing them as I have. Additionally, I nearly lost my brother in a traumatic accident my freshman year of college. And although he has exceeded the doctor's expectations and learned to walk, see, and talk again, his life, and as a result, my family's lives, were forever changed. I realize that I'm not the only one who has a story like this. However, I do not believe that my story defines me. It has influenced me to become the person I am today, yes, but it doesn't define me. That's why it's surprising that people are interested in my story, because I know that I'm so much more than my story, and so are you. I know that many of you in the audience, like me, have the responsibility of being the hope of your family, the hope for a college education and a brighter future, and that is what should define us, not our past, but our future. I believe that the best way to overcome your circumstances is to take control of your own life. Do whatever it takes to reach inside of yourself and find some sliver of self-worth and motivation. But also, understand that taking control of your life may mean asking for help. We are so fortunate at CSU to have such wonderful resources. Use them. As first-generation students, it's easy for us to try to do everything on our own. Do not be afraid to create a strong support system for yourself. In fact, I would not be here if it weren't for my support system. My father, who acted as both a mother and father, is everything to me. 
and I wouldn't trade my one parent for two for anything in the world. I'm also surrounded by a set of friends and excellent teachers who love and support me in all that I do. During my student teaching experience at Preston Middle School, the roles have reversed. Middle schoolers already leave very dramatic lives with changing friend groups, raging hormones, and embarrassing voice changes. Some students I come into contact with have an even greater set of struggles and unique stories of their own. The Partners Mentoring Youth Organization in Fort Collins gave me the opportunity to spend an hour or two a week with a struggling teen. And I know that one simple hour a week made a difference in one girl's life. Every day, I'm striving to take the guidance and support that I have received and give it back to my students. If I impact even one life, then that is enough. Barb Musselwhite recently shared a story with me that perfectly captures my goal as a teacher and soon to be first generation graduate. It goes like this. An old man was walking along a shore that was covered with starfish that had washed up after a storm. He approached a young woman who was picking up starfish one by one and tossing them back into the sea. The man asked her why she was doing this, to which she responded, if I don't, they will die. The old man chuckled and said, this shore is covered by miles of starfish. Don't you know that your work isn't making a difference? The woman tossed another starfish into the sea and said, it made a difference to that one. Use your stories to make a difference because you might change a life. After all, I was that one starfish and I would bet that most of you were too. I don't know about you, but I plan to pick up many starfish in my life and throw them back into the sea. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Can you guys see me? OK. <laughs> I hope everyone is having a good time. On behalf of my family and other first generation scholars, I would like to thank everyone that had a role in starting this amazing program, which affected many students' and families' lives. 30 years ago, there was a policy change that took place at Colorado State University, which opened doors for many talented first-generation students to get access to higher education. This opportunity was open to students like me who initially did not consider college as a possibility following high school. Like most of my peers here tonight, I would not have been able to attend college without the support of programs like the First Generation Award. 30 years ago, on the other side of the world, my parents were working longer hours to meet the needs for their two boys. I was born in 1994, and several years later, my father took a risk, and, a risk of leaving his country and family behind to find a better and a stable job in the United States. My dad moved to Denver, Colorado in 2001, hoping that he could one day find a job uh, and to be able to send money back to Ethiopia to educate his children. He wanted to give his kids the opportunity he didn't have for himself. After seven years of being apart from my dad, my mom and I were able to join him in the journey of finding a better life. One of the memories I have of my few days in the United States was my dad waking me up every morning so I could take a typing lesson. Some of you might recognize this program. It's called Mavis Beacon, a typing tutorial. <laughs> At that time, I did not understand why he made me do this every morning. Within a week, I realized that the keyboarding I learned through Mavis had prepared me for the typing I would do and my English courses. I wanted to take this moment to thank my mom, who's not here tonight, and my dad, who is here tonight, for giving me the chance and teaching me important life lessons. After only three days in the country, I started high school in Denver South High. During those four years of my high school, I was able to make connections and meet two amazing individuals from a program called Minds Matter, Julia and Jessica, who's here tonight, 
I would like to thank them for dedicating their time, for teaching me American culture, and helping me with my college application. Fast forward to the beginning of my college career here at CSU. Being, uh, because of my participation in the TRIO Talent Search Program, I had visited campus several times. I knew CSU was a great fit for me, but due to financial barriers, I was not sure if I could be able to afford. Finding out that I will receive the first generation award turned that dream into reality, as it did for many of us here tonight. Being a first generation scholar allowed me to dream bigger and chase goals I never imagined I would ever set for, for myself. Many of us have been able to receive additional resources to succeed in our college careers. Now it's our time to reach out and give back to the community that has given us so much. The people I met during my three years at Colorado State University has influenced me in many ways. I have been able to create long-lasting relationships and connections. As a junior now, I am a Global Village residential learning community mentor who gets the chance to interact with students from all over the world. I also get to work with outstanding coworkers who help me not only in my role as a mentor, but also as an individual. Global Village is not just a job for me, it's more like my home. Looking into the near future, I'll be embarking on a life-changing experience studying abroad at semester at sea. None of this would have been possible if it wasn't for a major announcement that came during my CSU Connect orientation visit. I learned that I would have been selected as a first generation scholar. Um, I, would be, I would become a part of a 30 years tradition. I'm honored to be a member of the first generation award. And thank you for your support. Now let's watch uh, our first video with one of our own first generation alum, Tony Ho. Hi everyone, my name is Tony Ho and I'm first. Um, I'm a first generation college student. I was uh, born and raised in Denver and um, I had a choice between CSU and CU and I decided to enroll in CSU's uh, psychology department because I was interested in doing research and perhaps being a counselor and um, yeah my parents supported me the entire way even though they didn't um, know how to apply for a FAFSA or you know doing a personal statement or anything like that but I also had lots of support from my high school counselor um, along the way and um, part of my decision to attend CSU was my uh, first generation scholarship award um, from uh, from CASA and Barb Muscle White um, really helped me out with that and I know Paul Thayer um, and uh, Gaby Gregorio are also part of that and so that really made a difference for my education because I was able to um, afford CSU um, and some of my other mentors came from my peers in the psychology department as well as um, faculty and staff within the psych department, um, particularly my academic advisor, Dee Batinger, um, just, to, just to name drop some people. Um, she really found my interest and really got me excited about it and referred me to the right resources and the right people to get involved. And then I ended up doing lots of um, undergraduate research and attending conferences and uh, just getting more involved in campus and making the best experience possible. Um, and I, uh, I definitely owe a lot of my success to them as I'm graduating from my uh, master's program in student affairs and higher education this May 2014. Um, so thank you all. And um, yeah, some advice um, for other fellow first-gen students I would say is um, seek mentors and don't be afraid to ask questions because if you don't ask questions you'll never know any better and those questions have led me on a really really circuitous path that has been very very um, meaningful and um, I've been able to do a lot in my time at CSU and now I'm just a 
looking for jobs in student affairs and higher education and uh, living the dream and hopefully supporting more first generation um, college students in the, in the near future. We're excited to let you know that Tony Ho did get a job. He's actually here at CSU within our Center for Advising and Student Achievement. And Tony is here tonight, right, Tony? Yeah, he's way in the back waving. Great. <laughs> to whom much is given, much is expected. I believe that that is our first generation legacy. I think you've heard that over and over again tonight. And award recipients, what an amazing gift we have been given. A gift that not only includes the financial benefit, it also has included the benefit of a wonderful first generation community and amazing mentors like Dr. Paul Thayer and Barb Musselwhite. I've had this benefit for 30 years and I can truly attest that it, along with a few other influences in my life, have changed me forever. So how many of you knew what you're gonna be when you grew up? Not most of us, right? Well, I did. I remember being five years old, playing with my dolls, and I knew that I wanted to grow up and be the best mom ever. I wanted to be exactly like my mom. She was and still is an amazing woman. She made sure our modest home was neat and tidy, as were my brothers and I. She made amazing meals on a shoestring budget. We had mostly rice and beans. But boy, did her homemade tortillas just envelop it all and make it wonderful, yummy goodness. Oh, I can taste it now. She made our clothing, the clothing for many of our cousins and others in the community who needed clothing. She would literally give others a shirt off her back, or in her case, a blouse off her back. And of course, any extra food that we could spare. I watched my mom and I drank it all in and said, that's what I want to do. So reaching my goal was going along just marvelously. Then my life took an interesting twist my sophomore year in high school. My high school home economics teacher told me she thought I should um, run for a state leadership position. I literally looked behind me to see who in the world could she be talking about. I couldn't do that. Well, not only did she mentor me to become a state officer, she also helped me get one of 15 national spots to spend a summer in Japan while I was still in high school. I also remember her buying me a pair of dress shoes because I, my family couldn't afford them. I remember telling her, I don't know how I can ever repay you. And she said, you never have to worry about repaying me and that if I ever had the chance to do the same for someone else, then that was payment enough for her. Well, right there and then, I decided I was going to be the best home economics teacher ever, <laughs> mentor others, and of course still be the best mom ever. My senior year in high school, my home economics teacher drove my mom and I to visit CSU one blustery and cold January day. I still applied, and I was admitted in March, and it looked like everything was set for me to come to CSU. And then the feed mill where my dad worked since he was 16 years old closed. He had had that job for almost 40 years. So I decided right then and there, I was gonna stay home, continue working at Burger King, and help my family make ends meet. Well, my mom was not having that at all. She made me go to Preview, which we now call RAM Orientation, and Preview sealed the deal. I fell in love with CSU, and I have been here ever since. I feel really blessed. Well, I don't know about all of you, but I didn't know what I didn't even know. I drove myself 250 miles to campus and moved myself in. I think back, and I, I try to imagine, how did I navigate everything? And I think there were three things that were really key, and, and several people have echoed this tonight. I read everything that came my way. I did everything I was told to do. And I didn't want to go home a failure, because then everyone back home would see me as a fraud that I felt I was. I wasn't sure I was good enough to be in college. Does that sound familiar? So a few days later, my life took another unexpected turn. The weekend before classes began, the advocacy offices, now called the Student Diversity Programs, had a mini retreat. I recall that we only had four advocacy offices at that time. El Centro Chicano Student Services, Black Student Services, 
um, lost my place, sorry, Native American Student Services and Resources for Disabled Student Services. I also remember that there were less than 500 of, of us diverse students on campus. Now I came from a town of about 300. So where there were, the only other brown people in our town were my cousins. So having 500 other diverse people on a campus was like heaven to me. I really felt like I had met a lot of people that I, I could relate to, could understand me, and would help me celebrate my culture. However, it's interesting the perspectives that we have. Leilani has a very different perspective that she'll share with us in just a little bit. This retreat was pivotal and a pivotal moment in my college career. We became a very tight-knit group. We became strong campus leaders, and we helped each other in many endeavors from bringing Jesse Jackson to campus to having the best dances around. One student leader was Joe Rogers. He was president for the Congress for African American Student Services, or CAUSE, and I was president for MECHA, which is Movimiento Estudiantil Chicano de Atzalan. We were also CSU homecoming royalty, as you see on, on the screen. He was the first black homecoming king, and I was the first Hispanic homecoming queen. Boy, did this create controversy on campus, but that's a, a and off campus as well, but that's a conversation for a totally another time. So. So Joe and I, along with many of our diverse friends and leaders, were also the first recipients of the First Generation Award. We were so excited. The award covered tuition and fees, which, would you believe, totaled about $1,500 the full 1984-85 academic year. Big difference now of almost $9,900. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> The award was such an honor, it really was, and it was a huge relief. I knew I'd be able to graduate, do the award, and the support from Paul Thayer and other campus allies. I also knew that this meant that I could take out less loans. Last year at this event, we honored Joe's memory. He had an amazing career and was even Lieutenant Governor for the state of Colorado. He passed away unexpectedly in the fall of 2013. Life is very precious. It's important for us to treasure every minute with each other. Well, the mini retreat was also pivotal in my life for another reason. I met the man in my dreams at that retreat. He was everything I was looking for. I remember going home at the end of that fall semester and telling my mom I had met the man I wanted to marry. Boy, was that a fun conversation. <laughs> Fortunately, the man in my dreams has a very good head on his shoulders. He said that he came to college to get his bachelor's degree, not his marriage certificate. <laughs> That's my daughter with the, the loudest laugh there. <laughs> Six years later, after we both had our degrees, had worked professionally, and had saved what we needed, we had a wonderful wedding. Then a few years later came my chance to try and be the best mom ever. My husband of almost 27 years, Neil Lujan, and my two adult children, Selena and Nick Lujan, are here with me this evening. Next one. Do you want to wave to everybody? <laughs> they have been my inspiration, my passion, and best supporters. Thank you for always being there for me. I have such fond memories of this event. I would bring Nick and Selena with me as often as possible, especially when funds allowed for guests to come, more guests to come. Here they are at my graduation when I received my master's. So they were always here with me on campus and with my husband as well. At this event about five years ago, I remember Barb announcing that my daughter was about to finish her first year of college. At first I thought, oh, how nice of Barb to mention this. That was really cool. Then later it hit me that this was monumental. I had broken the cycle and was now a firsthand witness to what the possibilities could be for our children when a parent has a degree. I then understood why Barb mentioned my children attending college. Selena now has her bachelor's degree, and Nick is in his second year here at CSU. Sometimes my kids give me a hard time because they don't qualify for grants, <laughs> or the First Generation Award, or need-based work study. But then I tell them, your dad and I obtained our degrees, so we would have the privilege of paying for your education. Now that's something I definitely didn't even think about 30 years ago, being a possibility. So just in case you're wondering, I did become a home economics teacher. 
have had many wonderful opportunities to pay back my home economics teacher by mentoring many students in every job I have had. And I am very humbled to share with you that Nick and Selena tell me very often that I am the best mom ever. Good kids. I want to echo a lot of what's been said tonight. I really wish for all of you the opportunity to fulfill our first generation legacy, our first generation award legacy, by seeking out the mentors who believe in you and who will help you reach your dreams. Many of them are right here in this room as mentioned. I hope you mentor others throughout your life, especially first generation students. I hope you see that every twist and turn that life hands you is a wonderful opportunity. I hope you have wonderful new possibilities that unfold for you and your family now that you are leading the way. Thank you. Now please help me welcome John Slavens. We are here tonight <clears throat> celebrating the 30th year of the FGA program. And coincidentally, I'm one of the very few students in the program now who is even alive for its inaugural year. <laughs> in fact, I was almost exactly my son's age when the first FGA students started coming to this campus. There is no doubt that my son and my desire to provide a better life for him is the reason I began pursuing my degree. However, I can honestly say that without the first gen program, I wouldn't be standing here today. Without the financial, educational, and emotional support provided by this program, I could never have been as successful here as I have been so far. Going back to university as a husband and father is not cheap or easy, but I wanted to show my son that going to college was worth the effort, and this program has allowed me to do just that. The idea of going to college was not something that was talked about a lot in my house while I was growing up. When it was brought up, the topic was usually met with a total lack of enthusiasm or encouragement. Not surprisingly, I had no real plan to get to college after high school. As many of you have come to know, planning is the most important step to achieving any goal, accomplishing any task. To develop a good plan means to fully understand the entire situation, to account for every known variable, and to make sound, informed decisions best on the best available information. That is not what happened with my parents when I was in school, but that is exactly what will happen for my child. The creation of and dedication to a solid plan is what will enable all of us first-gen students to become first-gen graduates. Unfortunately, having a good plan does not guarantee that anything will be easy. Even the best laid plans require dedication to purpose and resiliency of spirit. As a 32-year-old master plumber with a son in diapers, I left the trades and enrolled at Ames Community College full-time. I had a plan to spend two years at Ames knocking out as many prereqs as possible and then transfer to the CSU Engineering Department. From the start, I knew that I would have more and better scholarship opportunities if my grades were near the top of my class, and I was going to need as many scholarships as possible, so I dedicated myself to getting straight A's. I formed study groups, went to office hours, sought out online resources, and yes, I was even the guy that asked for extra homework. I spent two years doing everything in my power to get the grades I needed. I then transferred directly to the mechanical engineering department here, having completed every transferable credit Ames had to offer for my path and with a 4.0 GPA. Thank you. I know that without my hard work in the beginning, I could not be where I am now. I expected my first semester here to be more difficult than my classes at Ames and was prepared to continue working as hard as necessary to maintain my grades. I was not, however, prepared for how much harder these classes were, <laughs> nor the sheer volume of additional work that was going to be required. It was like trying to drink from a fire hose. In fact, about halfway through my first semester, I received the worst test score of my life, like ever. I evaluated my standing in all of my classes and thought for the first time, I don't know if I can do this. All of the planning, strategies, and tactics I developed at Ames were clearly falling short, and the now two-hour commute was driving me crazy, not to mention the logistics of having a child in grade school. I was truly floundering for the first time in my adult life. 
My wife used to liken me to Boxer, the horse from George Orwell's Animal Farm. As I'll work harder seemed to be my answer to everything. What I found once I got here, however, was that simply working harder wasn't going to fix it. I needed some guidance on where to direct my effort, because pushing ahead as hard as you can is fruitless if you're off course. Luckily, I wasn't in this alone. Barb Musselwhite is my advisor in this program, and I would like to thank her for all of her support. She helped me to find seminars on time management and study skills. She met with me to discuss new strategies and approaches. And most importantly, she made me feel like there was someone on campus that genuinely cared about my success. And while working harder was definitely required for any of those new plans to come to fruition, the support of this program was paramount to turning around that first semester. I finished that semester with a B-plus average and have managed to improve my cumulative GPA with every subsequent semester. And while my classes may keep getting harder and life will keep getting more complicated, my resolve to be successful at CSU has only grown stronger. With the unfailing dedication of my family, my own hard work and planning, and the financial and emotional support of the First Gen program, I will provide a better future to those most important to me. I offer my most heartfelt gratitude to all the people in the First Gen program who have made this possible for me tonight and for all the supporters of this program over the last 30 years. You have truly helped us to engineer our own educational paths. Thank you. Thank you, John, for your inspirational comments. And Cam, don't forget to listen to Dad. In traditional Latin American folk dancing, a woman wears a large white skirt, which she swishes back and forth, in and out, with exact precision. She dances the fine line of each side, left and right, with her chin up and maintaining an effortless grace. Like the left and right of the skirt, dancing between the two worlds of a university and a first-generation Latina home require the exact same precision. 30 years ago, in 1984, my mom was 14 years old. I wasn't even a thought in her mind 30 years ago when Colorado State decided to make the initial investment in first-generation students. My mom was a bright-eyed high school freshman who didn't even think she had the ability, let alone the willpower, to graduate high school. At that time, my grandma was hoping her two daughters, my mom and my Nina, also known as godmother in my family, would at least graduate by the skin of their teeth, my mom in particular. <laughs> Luckily, those teeth had just enough skin in them to get her across the stage at graduation. This accomplishment has helped guide her, my Nina, and my grandma to push This accomplishment has helped guide her, my Nina, and my grandma to push me to pursue my education. Not going to college was downright not an option for me. Since elementary school, I was enrolled in schools where teachers not only knew my name, but also knew where my mom worked, my Nina's name, and had my grandma's number on speed dial. Not that they ever really needed it. Because in my family, like many of yours, we don't disappoint my grandma. I was forced into a middle school that in retrospect set me up for six I was forced into a middle school that, in retrospect, had set me up for success and gave me opportunities and resources I wouldn't have had otherwise. We have great resources on our campus we have, so take it from me, use them, and use them wisely. High school just deepened those bonds and reinforced the sense of community that I have found I need to be successful. These bonds were not only made with my peers, but also almost each and every one of the teachers in the building, even ones that never taught me directly. These men and women help me to understand the importance of having a caring teacher, one that, you can connect, one that you can connect with both inside and out of the classroom. These relationships have been my guide in pursuing a career in education and serving underrepresented and low socioeconomic economic students like myself. During my first weeks at CSU, I had two major realizations. One being, I really did feel like the only brown kid on campus. And two, like Dorothy and Toto, I was a long way from home. <clears throat> These realizations made me that much more grateful for being a member of a key learning community. Key is an amazing and inclusive community that allowed me to interact with people of diverse backgrounds. 
as well as surround me with peers who were invested in their education. It's not easy, it's not easy being from a Denver Public High School at this university because not everyone understands the realities of an inner city student, such as coming from a high school where the majority of students are students of color. Although Key helped me connect in the classroom, I was still finding it difficult to connect with others on a predominantly white campus in the Vanilla Valley we call Fort Collins. That is when I sought out an organization that understood the value of women of color and what we bring to the table. Pi Lambda Chi Latina Sorority Incorporated, PLC for short, is a non-traditional Greek organization that helped bridge that gap for me. These women understood that sometimes you just have to suck it up and be the voice for those who have none in a 200 seat lecture hall. Or what it's like to budget your summer wages down to the penny just to make August rent. Because we all know refunds don't hit bank accounts until the Thursday before classes start. With my PLC sisters, I have shared in the struggles, but I have also shared in the celebrations, such as acing that nearly impossible chemistry test or capstone presentation. I remember getting the infamous email from Barb saying that I had good fortune in my future. This is when, before I realized it, I was embraced by the community we are surrounded by today. From Sherry and the CASA team and the First Generation Award Committee who receive all of the scholarship applications and renewals, to the first-gen faculty that give you the extra push in the classroom, to even the first-gen peers Barb will introduce you to while walking through the Student Center. We are not only acquaintances, we are all family. That is why we take care of one another. We look out for each other. We celebrate the wins and strategize for the losses. So go to those dinners that you're invited to, the one-on-ones -on -ones that are required. Meet that March 1st deadline and connect with those professors during office hours. Because when a first-generation student graduates, their diploma is not only a piece of paper. It is a celebration amongst us, the family. That is why this award and my diploma in 94 days is not only mine. It will be my first gen family, my, my key family, my PLC family, my CASA family, and most importantly, my mom, my Nina, and my grandmas. Thank you. So just so you all know, I started crying way before the program started. So <laughs> Michelle and, and others who usually put money on how long until Barb starts crying, it didn't even, we're in practice. <laughs> nice job, Leilani, good job. I'm always so impressed with the remarks that our Jackson scholars share. I was also really touched by Connie's walk through her first gen and CSU story. Every year, we recognize the threads and themes that are common to those of us who are first gen, whether we had the fortune of having a first generation scholarship or not. Caring for each other within our families and our communities. Gratitude for the support of those who have reached out to us. Responsibility to make life better for those around us and those we love. Thank you, John, Grace, Leilani, Dunya, and Connie for sharing your first gen stories with us. Colorado State is fortunate to have had the incredible support of our First Gen Award program for these last 30 years. I don't know if we actually made an, a big enough deal out of that. Colorado State was the first school to create a First Generation Award program in 1984. Let's hear it for <laughs> <laughs> And in these last few years, we've stretched our arms a little bit wider, and we have colleges and departments that are reaching out to their own students. In fact, there's three events this week that are all for first-gen students. People assume that they were this program, but in fact, Academic Advancement Center has a program, and Health and Human Sciences has a program, and then this program. And coming up, engineering has an, uh, biomedical engineering has a program, College of Liberal Arts has a program coming up. And uh, there's, uh, oh, Katie, the College of Business Net Network Dinner. So it's, it's growing. It's pretty wonderful because our first gen program is 55 students, new students every year. That's a small percentage when 25% of our freshman class are actually first gen. So thank you to all of those who are helping stretch that network a little bit wider. Makes me want to say, 
I'm proud to be a CSU Ram. <laughs> There's some business that I need to take care of while I have so many of our first-gen students in the same room at the same time. I've already had lots of emails and, and nervous questions come my way about the first-gen renewal. It will be online, and Sherry, don't panic. It will be online by March 1st. We're working on it. It'll be available. And it's not due until May 1st. So don't panic. The first-gen renewal is not due March 1st. But there is a couple of other paperwork things that are due March 1st. What are those? FAFSA and the asset paperwork. Good job. And Leilani, good job for giving them the heads up that March 1st is that important deadline. And for the first-gen renewal, now that those of you who are juniors and seniors next year, now that you've seen how cool it is to be a Jackson Scholar, be very thoughtful in your renewal essays, because we do read them. And if you, um, if you are a first-year student, I'll be sending an email very soon asking you to get on my calendar for our check-in. If you are within the Community for Excellence, you might be checking in with someone else, but we do want to see that things are going well for you as you make it through this year. And those who are graduating, if you tell us when your ceremony is, we'll be there. You can't miss us. <laughs> we'll have pom-poms, we'll have clappers, we'll, we'll be your cheering squad. There's also an opportunity if you would take um, a look at the network sheet on your table, if you would flip it to the back side. We know that there are a lot of students who are first generation who come to CSU and who never heard about our scholarship. They weren't fortunate to be in a TRIO program, they weren't in AVID, they weren't in Gear Up, they weren't DSF. They didn't have those networks to tell them about this amazing opportunity. So if you have people back in your home community, your high school, your community college, agencies that you worked with, Boys and Girls Club, other kinds of network agencies back home, who would have people that we should be getting our first generation excuse me, first generation award information to, <coughs> please write down their name. If you don't know enough information about how to reach them, just give us your name and that you have somebody and we'll take it from there. So the, the back of the network sheet where we asked you to sign your name, if you have some suggestions, please make sure that we get those. The most important message that I need you, our students, to hear tonight is the same message that I tried to convey when we first met at CSU Connect. We're at Preview, we're at Next Step, the programs that we now call RAM Orientation, and that I shared with our first year students at the September Community for Excellence Fall Academic Summit. You matter. Each of you is a precious member of our first gen community, of our CSU family. And please always remember that myself and others are here for you. I think you've heard that quite a bit tonight, but seriously, we are here for you. Each of you is our starfish, and we believe that what we have to offer will make a difference for you. I have an additional important message to you all. The first gen celebration tradition is that the stuffed ram centerpiece belongs to the student at the table, first generation award student. <laughs> She's already claimed hers. <laughs> She's been waiting for this. The first generation award student at the table who is closest to graduation. So that is your prize, claim your prize. And, and where, where are my 2015 grads again? <laughs> and just so there's no fighting, if there's more than one 2015 grad at the table, we have some extra um, at the back and we'll have some in the office. So if, you, if, if there is more than one 2015 grad at your table, don't panic, we'll, we'll take care of you. And for those who are not graduating this year, now you know you need to come back next year or the year that you're actually graduating. Colorado State University has become home for most of us. The creation of the First Generation Award Program in the 1984-1985 school year, along with the increased awareness and acceptance of our diversity in these first 30 years of the First Gen Program, have made a difference for the over 1,300 students who have been fortunate to graduate from Colorado State University as a First Generation Award recipient. That's pretty impressive. We need to do better, so if you need something, you make sure you ask us, but 1,300, that's, that's pretty impressive. And students always remember that we are your village. Seriously, we are your village. And we look forward to seeing what each of you will contribute to our First Generation Award family and your communities in these next 30 years. 
And as we bring this program to a close, our First Generation Award program would like to thank all of the village that helps us support our students throughout the year. Originally I had a list, and then I realized we'd be here a long time. And some of you have another program at seven o'clock, and some of you are headed to the game at nine. Go Rams. So um, just know that we know who you all are, and, and we believe that you know who you are, and just know that we appreciate everyone who contributes to our students, because it really, they, you all are our students. There's not one of us that has like the corner on caring for you. I do want to offer special thanks to our Vice President for Diversity for providing funding for this event. Thank you, Mary. And to Sherry Douglas and Will Galarza and Connie Jaime Lujan, who were a great team in helping prepare for tonight. Thank you to Tony Ho and Professor Peake for sharing your videos with us. Um, the Chancellor has left the building, but we thank him as well, and, and we, we would like to send him good wishes as he transitions to a new role with the university system. Thank you to our thoughtful First Generation Award Committee who will soon be reviewing applications for next year for the 2015 awards. We offer appreciation to the Lori Student Center event planning and catering services for preparing the food and creating this lovely room for us, this lovely setting for tonight. Karen and Bob. We're so glad you're here. And thank you to each of you for sharing this evening with us. Safe travels and go Rams. <laughs>